Welcome to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. I am Beth Cooper. I am Stacy Earlywine, and as usual, Beth and I are just sitting here right before uh, we get to talking. I don't uh -huh. know. We just our mind races and goes this yes. way. And and um, Beth, I was like, oh, so you know, we usually like just talk a little bit in the first, like what's going on and that uh -huh. type of thing. And I'm like, well, what's going on today? Well, we really don't know like that. And I'm like, well, what are we going to talk about? And I'm like, I don't know. And I start saying, let's give them something to talk about. And Beth says, I love that movie. <laughs> The song is good too, but if you haven't seen the movie, let's give them or something to talk about. It's just the title, something to talk about. Oh, it's a good one. Julia Roberts, and they're on like this horse farm and like Lexington. Don't you want to live somewhere. there? Yes. Well, I want Kara Sedgwick. If I, uh -huh. I love, I have two sisters. Uh huh. I love my sisters. We all get along. Uh -huh. We're a hoot together. But if I could have, add one more sister to mine, uh -huh. it would be Kara Sedgwick. <laughs> yeah, she's she's great, and I love her. She's married to Kevin Bacon. Oh. And yeah, in real life, and uh, I follow Kevin Bacon on social media. I don't I know love why Kevin. I do. I don't know how that even happened. Because they're some, the most down to earth two people in the entire are, world. They're very down to earth. They live on a farm, and they have all these goats and small cows and all these things. And they go out to the barn, and they shoot these little like Facebook reels mm -hmm. or TikTok videos of them like singing. They all sing. Kira sings, yeah. and then her the kids sing, and and then all the goats and everything are all around yeah <laughs> it's very laid back and like they're scoopy manure singing yeah it's it's super yeah. cute so are, yeah that, she's yeah. in that kira sedgwick is in the movie with julie roberts and it is she such is. a good movie it is a good movie and she's also in one of my top five favorite movies secondhand lions yes. she plays that terrible mother that she's I just a terrible want to mother in that she's movie. great and then when she did the closer the okay. tv show did you ever watch the closer no i didn't watch that what i didn't i'm sorry Beth Cooper. I probably had young kids. I didn't watch. You need to. You would love it because she's an investigator. She. Uh -huh. It's that type of thing, and it's. Fa she's hysterical. She's got okay. this guy southern. You have got to watch the closer. Okay, it's probably streaming. I can probably watch it. It is streaming, and you're going to la la la. Okay. It. Well, Jason and I were just saying the other day that we wish we had a new series to watch, so we'll watch yeah. that. Yeah. I, you know. Okay. So this is the rabbit we're going to chase. Okay. So I um started watching The Mentalist. Yeah, I've heard that's good. It is so good because it's. I like detective shows, though. I do, too. Yeah, you're going to start watching The Closer. Okay. Because I already binged all of Blue Bloods. Okay. Which I love Blue Bloods, too. Mm -hmm. There's something about Tom Selleck. There is something there about <laughs> Tom Selleck. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you'll love The Closer. But, yeah, The Mentalist is really good. Okay. I forgot how great it was. Well, I just finished a series this week. What? Um, and we've talked about it briefly on another show, Ghosts, the BBC version, yeah. the, the UK version of Ghosts. Yes, there's a current one on yeah. CBS. And That's love, still going. They're I love on it. season three for the US version. Season five of the BBC version, which you can stream, um, they ended the series with they season did. five. They ended it's the series. It's done. So this was a, not just a... It's like the end of the show. It was the end of series, all of the show. Series finale. I, a, series finale. And I am not kidding when I say it is my least favorite series finale since MASH. Really? See, because I don't like the BBC. I like the new ver. I like the American version. I do like version. the American version. And I like them both equally. Are I they, think they're so both really good. Are they good. going to? Because they're kind of, I mean... I mean, they're, if they end the United States version the same way they end that BBC version, I am writing a letter to CBS. Well, you're going to have to tell me how it ends now. I I'm not going to do it on air because you I got to tell me because I, yeah, it I'll ended be badly. It you ended in a way that made me furious. Why, why did you not like MASH? MASH is any. They all went home. Yeah, that part was fine, but there was a scene. <laughs> What? There was a scene um, <laughs> where they were trying to leave, and Hawkeye, I think it was Hawkeye, was on a bus, and there was a, a bunch of Koreans on there, and the bat, the there was, like, somebody that was, like, walking around trying to get them, and they had to, um, there was a baby crying, mm -hmm. and they had to suffocate the baby so that they weren't all found and killed. That's how that ended? And they killed the baby. I must have not have been paying any attention. It, it haunts me to this day. It's seriously one of the worst scenes ever. I don't even like talking about change the subject. Quick, hurry, quick, hurry. Uh, no, it was awful. What is the, okay, we're going to do, okay. Okay. Because I think at one time, MASH was the most watched series finale. Yeah, Ty Google. Ty that. Google, what is the most, because I've got my, I think it's going to be Seinfeld. It's either going to be Seinfeld or Friends. 
You think outnumbered Mash? I think Seinfeld's. Beat I think Mash. Seinfeld's going to outnumber Mash because Mash at one time was the number one. I'm going to go with Seinfeld, and I didn't like the way Seinfeld ended. Did you remember how they they all went yes. to jail? Yes. I okay. thought that was kind of dumb. Yeah, it was kind of dumb. And I don't know how, I can't remember how Friends ended. Because I kind of fell off. I'm Friends, gonna... um, it ended, I, actually, I was okay with the ending of Friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. What, do you know yet, Ty? Uh, I think Mash. It's still Mash. Mash, it, Mash has more f the series finale watchers than, than so really, I would have But I bet they didn't enjoy it as much I as they enjoyed it. I bet my bottom the... dollar. What is it? Number two oh, is Cheers. Oh, I love Cheers. I oh forgot my about gosh. Cheers. I've been rewatching re Cheers. Three is the Fugitive. Three is the Fugitive. Four is Seinfeld. Four is Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Five is Friends. And Five is Friends. Okay. That's the most watched series I never watched The Fugitive. Of, I've never watched it either. Should I'm, we write it down? Maybe it's pretty maybe good. Maybe it's pretty good, I guess. But yeah, I, I figured MASH. So MASH is number one. Mm hmm What do you say? MASH is number one. Mm hmm Cheers. cheers. I love Cheers. I cheers love was cheers great. Too. MASH, Cheers, Fugitive, Seinfeld, Friends. I can kind okay. of remember the last episode of Cheers, and it kind of makes me cry a little bit. I can't remember the last. I remember. Okay, so I, apparently I don't remember any of them. So, so how did Cheers end? I think there was a scene where, like, they close up the bar. Everything's closed. Yeah. And then this shadow walks up to the door. Yes, yes, and yes, And looks yes. in. Yeah. And then but it never really told you who the shadow was. Right. So who do you think the shadow was? Shelly Long. Yes. She's coming back. Yeah, Diane, I think. Diane's so too. coming back. But yeah, did he like sell the bar? Yeah, I think so. And I was like, because when Shelly Long I like Shelly Long too. When Shelly Long left that, I'm like, and I I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna like I love Kirstie Alley as much as I sometimes did too. they can't be replaced, but Kirstie, Kirstie Alley, Alley did a really right good in. job. And what's funny about Cheers is after Diane left, they they threw some jokes in at the bar, oh, yeah. like while they were all sitting around, I was yeah. like talking about other things. They were like, Why would somebody leave right in the middle of their success? Exactly. You know, and things <laughs> like that, like just little digs. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, yeah. because really Shelly Long didn't go I mean, I don't know why you'd lose that gig. But people do that. They think they're on top of the world, so they're gonna move on to bigger, better things, yeah. and then it come to find out they don't i'd ride that train to the station you man betcha. there's no way i would not uh -uh, no me too. I, I would do that yeah, yeah and the few i don't even know what the fugitive's about i don't either but we'll write it down yeah watch the fugitive and friends Report i'm assuming back. everybody got married i well like ross or your chandler and what's her face or see because i started chandler watching... and monica had had babies and they left and moved i think to the suburbs yeah and, and then and then ross and rachel were together and had a kid yeah. But did they get divorced? No. No, they I were still there. They still got. Yeah. What happened to poor Joey and, and Phoebe? Phoebe was married. Phoebe, Phoebe got was married. married to someone, and then Joey was just Joey. Just Joey. Joey's the only one that never changed. Yeah. That was a good show, though. Well, I then liked Joey it. and Phoebe should have stayed together and just stayed living together and done their thing. But Phoebe it's, married somebody else. That's true. Poor Joey. Poor yeah, Joey. I liked Friends, but then it was kind of like. I got I got bored. Well, with you were it a little old for it, a little bit. At yeah, the when time. did it come I mean, out? Nineties. It was, it, it was I, in the nineties. I was raising I was in kids. high school. It was in its heyday. Yeah, I was raising kids. That's probably where I was when the closer came out. Pro probably, yeah. Because uh, I'd never watched the closer when it was on. I uh -huh. started watching it after it's over. I do that a lot too. Like I'll watch something. Mm -hmm. Didn't have time because I was raising kids and working, so I didn't watch it. Mm -hmm. But when I was in the eighties, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dynasty. Mm -hmm. Knott's, we were soap opera people, nighttime mm -hmm. soap operas, Dynasty and Knott's Landing, mm -hmm. Dallas, mm -hmm. Dallas Dynasty, Knott's Landing. I love the other sitcoms of the 80s, like Growing Pains. I liked, and, yeah, those were all good. Yeah. Those were good things. Mr. Belvedere, did you ever watch that one? I never did watch Mr. Mm -hmm. Belvedere. I was uh -huh. a Happy Days girl. Happy mm -hmm. Days, Laverne and Shirley. Mm -hmm. Love them. Yeah. Grew up a lot on of good shows. Go back and watch our episode on Grew, the yeah. 80s and 90s, and we did... 70s yeah. and 60s and 50s we did them all We've we done, did them all we did the teens the 20s 30s and then then once we got to the after the 90s it's like well what's the 2000s nothing stands out to me like mm -hmm. like two is is 20 20 20 20 30 20 it's not going to stand out like the 19s did i feel like we lost our maybe people that are ahead of us that will look back at will to them but to know. us, we're just in the midst of it, so it doesn't. Because, like, I think of clothing now. I think clothing for the last 20 years has been pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. You know, once the 90s got done with their grunge look, you know, everybody mm -hmm. has that specific. But, like, 2010, I'm, I don't feel like, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to talk about an ad today. Okay, what do you have? 
Okay, so it's vacationing time. Everybody's going on vacation, right? Yes. So I picked up a, uh, I found this on, uh, it's a Charming Mexico, a Mexico ad, going on vacation. Where your dollar means a longer and better vacation. That's right. I couldn't get the whole thing because I can't remember how you told me to take the picture because it wouldn't work when you when I went the other way like this. Told me you told me so uh -huh. I had to button down so I couldn't get the whole thing. But anyway, I thought this was interesting because you don't come across in these magazine vacation ads. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you. Charming Mexico, where your dollar means a longer and better vacation. In Mexico, your dreams come true. Now you can do all these those wonderful things you planned and within your budget. Okay. Your dollar buys so much more in Mexico. Like this pottery. Like this pottery. <laughs> Enjoy a delightful climate throughout the year. 365 days of sunshine. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't really say how much it is, but it's like uh, the di direction. I don't know. Now it's in. Now uh -huh. it's in. I don't know. Uh -huh. Basically, it's like Juarez, Mexico. Um, you ain't having a good time in Juarez. No, Juarez uh, would not Juarez be a good vacation the spot. It would be like right there at the border, across from El Paso, yeah. and you would probably not feel very vacation. You're not going to feel very. That's where you're going to get robbed and murdered and sold into sex trafficking. Uh huh. Your your uh, your travel agent will tell you, but I don't know. It's like in all Acapulco. these Acapulco. I bet that's where they went. Acapulco. Acapulco. I they bet. Talk about that in Dirty Dancing. That's where yeah, I get Acapulco. all my information. Now it's can. Cancun, Cozumel, uh -huh. um, which a little bit about, I love Mexico. It, it's one of my, I love Mexico. It's mm -hmm. uh, when my sister Linda, you can take the ad off now, but I thought that was interesting to come across a vacation ad for yeah. Mexico. But when Linda was first, when Linda was married, um, first married, she lived in San Antonio. Okay. So when we would go, one of my favorite things when I would go visit my sister was we would jump across, we'd go down to the border and jump across at Laredo, Noveo. Mm -hmm. And I loved jumping the border towns. Of course, you would never do that now because it's totally not safe. Uh -huh. But we, I felt we'd, we'd go down there and mm -hmm. we'd stay in Mexico all day long and, mm -hmm. and that. And then I've been across the border there at El Paso, did a mm -hmm. mission trip and went into Juarez. Mm -hmm. uh, never, I would never do a border town now, but I love Cozumel. Um, I love Cancun. Mexico's mm -hmm. spectacular. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Mexico is the people that live in those places, they love their they love their country. Mm -hmm. They love their country. You meet a lot of proud Mexicans, and they're not – it's not the Mexicans smuggling in through the southern border that mm – -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a beautiful place, and it is mm – -hmm. gosh, is it spectacularly gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I've I, only been there once. Now, what part of Mexico did you go to? Cozumel. I was only there for four hours. Oh, what happened? I mean, what's the deal? Uh, because I was on the cruise ship from H E Double Hockey Sticks, and we oh, you're that's we, your your was, uh, we honeymoon. Were, we were out running the hurricanes that were at sea, so we had been on mm -hmm. the ship for like five days solid, and, and very turbulent waters. It looked like we were crab fishing. And then we were allowed to get off the boat for four hours only at Cozumel, mm. and then we had to get right back on the boat and leave before the hurricane came. Oh, your honeymoon wasn't a nightmare, wasn't it? It really was. Yeah. You should go back and give so, it a try now. Four hours in Mexico. I had a cheeseburger at um, the Hard Rock Cafe, Mexico. <laughs> it was horrible. Food was nasty. Really? But I remember I bought some really pretty silver jewelry from a street yeah. vendor. But, you know, unless you're buying from a street vendor, you're not. Because I bought that. This ring's not. But I bought that one ring back from Mexico. And uh, the deals you get in Mexico aren't what they used to be. Right. I remember, like, going across the border, and I would buy gold. I'd buy stuff, and I wouldn't spend nothing. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's changed a little bit. They're not mm -hmm. quite as cheap when the tourist comes into town. But mm -hmm. when Jim and I went to Mexico in January, I'm going to make it a, a yearly January trip. Mm -hmm. We went in there, and we went to that Isla Mujeres totally sold on it mm -hmm. I, i'm to the point where i think like if i was going to pack up and sell everything i'd move to that island really it's beautiful wow. love 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 isla mujeres isla mujeres yeah sounds very fancy i just went bleh, bleh, bleh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but anyway uh we got a great show today we're going to talk about the four sisters sewing factory mm -hmm. and manufacturing and we're going to talk about regina buckley mm -hmm. who was a uh strong female entrepreneur mm -hmm. in Florida and has a, a great story. We're going to talk about that yep. when we come right back. At your locally owned Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville, you can count on experts to have the solutions to keep you running on the road or in the field. 
More than just your car, the Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville carry a large inventory of Napa products for farms, heavy trucks, and just about everything that moves. Experienced associates understand your needs and are ready to help with the perfect part at a great value. That's Napa Know How at your locally owned Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville. Briscoe Surplus Sales on the northeast edge of Flora is your one-stop do-it-all shop. Looking for rugged boots and footwear from great brands like Lacrosse, Rocky, and Carolina? They're there. How about top-notch small engine parts and service? Briscoe Surplus Sales has it. Whether you're wiring your switches or switching your wiring, Briscoe Surplus Sales has the solution and the know-how to help you get the job done right the first time. Briscoe Surplus Sales, your one-stop do-it-all shop. We like technology at Flora Savings Bank. Here's what you can accomplish in our mobile banking app in less than 30 seconds. See account balances in your transactions, set up an account alert, make a transfer between accounts, get an alert text message about your transfer, pay a bill, turn your debit card off and then back on. It all happens in the palm of your hand with our free My Bank To Go app. Search My Bank To Go in the App Store or Google Play and give mobile banking a try. Flora Savings Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Welcome back to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. I'm Beth Cooper. I'm Stacy Earlywine, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, Mrs. Buckley. Yes. Uh, which you mentioned her name uh, for a petite little gal. She yep. was a fireball. She was a fireball, and she was not <laughs> not very big. She no. was pretty short. Mm -hmm. She always wore high heels. Mm -hmm. She was always dressed to the nines. Absolutely. And she was a local businesswoman that ran Four Sisters Manufacturing. They manufactured... Um, a variety of things, but um, mainly, what was it? Under garments? Under garments, yes. Under garments. I've got some pic the pictures that I've got are okay. so funny, but uh, Regina Joanne Perkowski. Yes. She was a little Polish girl. Mm -hmm. um, she was born November 20th, 1912. Like she said that, but the thing about Regina is, is here's this young girl, petite Polish girl, um, lives up north in like in Cook uh -huh. County, up in uh -huh. Chicago. This young lady quits going to um, school, and um, at an early age, at, and starts working at 13. 13 years old. Can you think about 13 year old children now? Yeah. And this girl goes well, to work you know, in a sewing factory. It was the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. And uh, she didn't know one darn thing about sewing, mm -hmm. but she learned <laughs> she learned the manufacturing business yep. while she was there. Yep. And um, she did what she had to do for her family, you know? Yep. Her parents were Louis and Agnes Prokowski. She was born in Chicago, Chicago, Chicago Polish girl. Mm -hmm. I know another Chicago Polish girl, my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law, Virginia Earlywine, was born. No uh, kidding. Yeah, she was born in Chicago, went to school uh, in Chicago. And um, actually, uh, her mother owned a restaurant on the railroad there in Chicago Heights. Mm -hmm. That's where she met Jim's dad, yeah. who was from Palestine. Huh. And him and the Earlywine boys all worked the Chicago line from Chicago to New Orleans. They were conductors on the railroad. No kidding. And they would stop there at the Chicago Heights. And, the, and, and Virginia, Jim's mother, uh, was working in her mother. And her name was Stella Cabay. Stella Cabay was Jim's grandmother. And she had a restaurant there. And um, and Virginia worked in the restaurant. And that's how she met Jim's dad. That's a neat story. Yeah, so my, I, my, my boy's got some Polish in him. Okay. Yeah, so we got a little bit mm -hmm. of Pol Polish Czechoslovakian in there. Okay. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Well, but anyway, Chicago Poles, go. Uh -huh. And when we say <laughs> Buckley, it's spelled a little different than a lot of the Buckleys around here. It's B-U-C-K-L-E-H. Yes, it's not like, and uh -huh. you know, when I was looking for her, I'm like, I can't find, how can I not find uh -huh. anything on Regina Buckley? I was spelling it the wrong. And my sister Diane said, Stacy, I, I don't think she spelled, I'm like, oh, good Lord, it's Buckley. Uh -huh. Well, guess what? Uh-huh. Diane you were, was, you were, she was right, you were wrong. Well, well but did you have? She was she right, was right. you were wrong. No, you didn't have to put the wrong part in there. I you were mistaken. Mis mistaken. You were mistaken. That's all it was. That's all it was, a little mistake. You were mistake. just mistaken. Okay, but, so yeah. here we go. So, yeah. So, she started working at the sewing factory at 13, and that is where she met Mr. Buckley. Yes. Um, and he was repairing sewing machines. That was his job. So, you're a sewer. Yep. Sewist, I like to say. Sewist, you're I don't a like, sewer. Sewer is a word, but it's it's spelled like sewer. Okay, so you're when a, you see it, it looks like sewer. So I say okay. sewist. 
Uh, I can't thread a needle. So I want you to explain to me yes. how somebody who doesn't know anything about sewing, like Mrs. Buckley, uh-huh. did not. Uh-huh. How did she fake that? I don't how think do you, you do needed that? to know it to get hired. But I think, how did you make, I mean. Oh, they set you down in a machine and they're like, this is step one, step two. I mean, just like if you didn't know anything about driving a forklift and you went to work yeah. at a factory and they would say, your job is driving this forklift. This is what you do. I'll give you a 10 minute training. Right. By I golly, you learned to drive it pretty quick, I'd say. I would have stuck so many needles in my finger. I would have been sewing my shirt to that shirt. <laughs> you would have been. <laughs> no. I, it would have been awful. Those sewing machines back then were pretty simple, really, in the realm of things. They mm-hmm. did. They weren't computerized like they are today, so there's not 10 million settings. Right. It's uh, push this pedal, and it makes it go. This is where you put your thread. This mm-hmm. is, you know, okay. if you need to back. It was probably pretty straightforward. My so. mother sewed all. I remember my mom had a, so I still have my mom's sewing machine. Um, and yeah, she, uh, she mm-hmm. sewed our, she sewed my sister's clothes. What kind of sewing machine did she have? Um, I don't know. It's in this yellow container thing and it's uh-huh. got like blue flowers on it and you can pick it up and carry it places. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> once again, I don't, I don't know, but she uh-huh. sewed all the time. Okay. And she would, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Does that do anything for you? No. I like, mean, she would push buttons and thing with the. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that little thing would go. Uh huh. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Well, Mrs. But, Buckley's. Uh-huh. Well, his name was what? Albert. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, her husband Albert Buckley, mm-hmm. and he at least worked on sewing machines. So mm-hmm. I think that's kind of an interesting thing. I would. Mm-hmm. I wonder how long. But he knew a lot about, she was learning the business, he was learning the business. He yeah. was there to move up in the business. Yeah, so, he was there. Um, after they got married, they began a contract sewing business, which is mm. basically they were doing work for other companies. And um, then they built up their business to nine sewing factories in Southern Illinois, including the Four Sisters Manufacturing Company in Florida. So they didn't just own the one in Flora. They, no, they owned nine, nine of them. So here's this little couple, 13-year-old mm-hmm. girl, and I don't know how old he was. Uh, I'd have to do some math. but And they started as nothings in the sewing industry. Mm-hmm. She was at the lowest level you could come in at. He was the guy that fixed the machines. Right. And they worked their way up, went into their own business, and started nine, nine sewing manufacturing. manufacturing businesses where they were making things. Do, uh, now, when I was coming across it, uh, the stuff on Mrs. Buckley, I, I know, I know, and the four sisters that we know of, four sisters manufacturing in Florida, uh-huh. is because of their, four, their daughters. They had four at the time that they named that. That they named that. They ended up having five daughters, but they never changed yeah, the name. Yeah, they never changed the name. But I wonder what the other factories were called. I'm not sure. Because I know I she did. I know she she managed Kern. She was big mm-hmm. into Flora, mm-hmm. and we'll talk about that a little bit more. I don't want to yeah. jump ahead of my story, mm-hmm. but, I, but it makes you wonder since there was nine, what they named them all. Yeah, I don't know. So she ended up at age seventy. She ended up selling Kern or Four Sisters, and mm-hmm. then it was bought out by a company and turned into Kern Manufacturing, which mm-hmm. then she managed. Until she finally retired in 1992 at the age of 80. 80 years old. But we skipped a lot, so we're going to back up a little bit. Yeah, but, let's back up. But um, in 1946, Albert died un- unexpectedly. So mm-hmm. here she was with five daughters. Five daughters. No husband mm-hmm. and nine factories to and run. I can't even fathom it. And she did it like a boss. Like she yeah. nailed it. Like mm-hmm. she was... Like, if you were going to do a movie about some woman that is, like, one of the first business women that also had a family yeah, that absolutely. did it all, like, she, She's your gal. she had to be juggling so many things and sh- and just nailed and, it, just and flawless. From my, from my understanding, and from my understanding about Mrs. Buckley, um, I was taught, because I did not know her. I was, she was alive when I was alive, of course, but I did not know her. My sister Diane did therapy on her. And after talking, like Diane was a therapist at the hospital, and after talking to people that would come and get therapy and they'd talk about Mrs. Buckley or whatever, she was tiny. She mm-hmm. was a tiny little petite thing, like you mm-hmm. said, dressed to the nine, always wore high heels every mm-hmm. day of her life. Mm-hmm. And when that woman, she, she had loyalty, she mm-hmm. had respect. Yes, everyone. But I'll tell you what, whenever her. Mrs. Buckley came in the building, it was 
Every, all hands were they wanted to do what they needed to do with Mrs. I mean, yeah, they, everybody respected they were loyal. Her. They were and respectful. everyone was, I think, a little. There were some people that she kind of made a little bit nervous, although I don't Absolute, know why. I don't know why. Because she wasn't a mean woman, but she was definitely the from what I hear. I didn't know her either. Um, you know, she was she she just commanded respect. Absolutely. And Absolutely. everyone like snapped to attention, sit up straight. Mrs. Buckley's in the room. Be polite. Be and, courteous. And, and you guys, we're not we're not talking today. We're talking. She's in a man's world. Yeah. She. This is the '40s. This is the '30s and '40s. This little girl is in a man's world in mm -hmm. manufacturing. Yes, she is. She was very implemental in shaping shaping a lot of mm -hmm. flora too. So, but yeah, I would I would have loved. Diane loved her when mm -hmm. Diane. Everyone did I know that knew her. Loved oh her. my gosh, Diane absolutely loved her. Mm -hmm. So it it um so basically is she had two jobs. She had the factories that she was running, and then she had this home life where mm -hmm. she's raising these five daughters. Um, it's, uh, in, in her obituary, it says she was successful at both, miraculously balancing work and civic duty with raising her daughters. So mm -hmm. let's focus on civic. Duty yeah. for a moment because not only was she <laughs> running these factories yes. and um, also running a family with five girls in five it. Five daughters. Um, she was involved in her community, which is, mm -hmm. I know life is busy today, but there are very few people out there who are involved in their community these Absolutely. days. It is a handful of people mm -hmm. in Clay County that do these jobs over and over that are involved in the boards and involved in um, involved the 501c3s. And back then it was just, of course you were involved in something. What group mm -hmm. are you in? I'm in the ladies group and the women's club and I'm in the rotary or whatever. I mean, yeah. everyone had something, Everybody had something civic they that they were doing. It's, Women the, especially. Ma the majority of the citizens yeah. of Clay County were, had some type of mm -hmm. civic duty in these but, days. But the Nowadays they do not. But the difference between Mrs. Buckley and these these other women were housewives. Mm -hmm. These uh, not a lot of the other, not mm -hmm. a lot of the other women. Mrs. Buckley was doing all of these things mm -hmm. and running uh -huh. nine factories. Not like you know, and I don't want to take away from working mothers by no. I mean, you know, stay at home uh -huh. moms, but they have the you know. There's more time in the day, I would assume, for them. But this woman's running, and we're not just talking one. Mm -hmm. It's not. I've always worked when the kids were little and was still able to do a lot of stuff. But I had one job. This woman's running nine factories. Yes. Uh, That's she, crazy. And Regina always said she had two families. Yeah. One at home and one at work. And that's how she looked at her employees. She didn't look at them like no. my little minions down there on the floor in the sewing factory doing all the work. No, she looked at them like family, yeah. like she cared about each of them. We're going to take a commercial break. Okay. And then we come back. I've got some pictures of the Four Sisters sewing factory and some fun things that go along with that. We'll take a look at that. But first, we're going to uh, take a commercial break. If you're looking for a loan for your brand new home Call Clay County State Bank If you want to transfer money so your future will look sunny Call Clay County State Bank We got checking and savings and we'll pay too If only in bank you just ask a fee For all your banking needs we think you will agree Clay County State Bank is the place you need to be Clay County State Bank at Clay City Banking Company, we're all on the same team, regardless of zip code. At home, work, school, or across the country, you can be part of our team with our cutting-edge mobile banking products. From your hand, you can check balances, transfer money, make deposits, and pay bills. Looking for a loan? We've got you covered with our mortgage, agriculture, commercial, and consumer loans. Join our team today. Clay City, Floor, Louisville, and Fairfield Banking Companies. We're the hometown banks, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Tomorrow, some fear the uncertainty it brings. Some trust the promise it holds. At Grinnell Mutual, we are always looking forward to tomorrow, growing and innovating. So even if the plans you have for the future aren't the same as the plans that the future holds for you, you can be ready. Because we'll be ready, like we have been for over 100 years. Trust in that. Trust in tomorrow. Talk to your mutual agent today. Your local agent is on the square. Louisville, Clay County, Farmers Mutual Insurance. <laughs> Stacy, welcome back to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. She likes to try to make me laugh right as we come back on air. So today we're talking about Regina Buckley and the Four Sisters Manufacturing Company that she ran That's along right. with the eight other businesses. But Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about the actual factory and the building. Now, this uh -huh. building set between North Main Street 
and North Locust. So where the city hall is at now, uh, where the, li the, the library's at, that's where this building sat. Uh -huh. Okay. The factory was 80 feet by 115, located on 2nd Street between Main and Locust. So literally right across, right where the... Uh, the new city hall. The new sits. city hall is. It was a two-story building with a partial basement. Now this building was built. I'm not sure what it was built to, but this I can't. Even, I don't know why they tore it down because this thing would have lasted for decades. Oh really? Decades. Yeah. Listen to this. Reinforced concrete walls and roof. Pebbled dashed stucco interior. Metal frames. Wire glass steam heat. Hmm. Plumbing, electric elevator, electric lights, electric and then wiring, of course, iron pipe conduit. This place had 193 sewing machines. Cool. It would be like your mm -hmm. Barbie dream house. Mm -hmm. um, attachments, including machine tablin motors. Does that make sense to you? Machine what motors? Tablin. No, that doesn't make sense to me. T-A-B-L-I-N-S. Might to somebody else. Tablins. Shaftings. Moose. Moose silent chain drivers. Fafner shafting. Bearing furniture fixtures. Metal chairs. Iron trucks. Electric fans. And so on and so on. So this building was a two-story building with a... I re it sounds like a bunker. It's like so well built. It right? sounds like a storm shelter for sure. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Good for yeah. them. They didn't just build a building to last a little while. They built it to last a lifetime. Absolutely. It's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I didn't know if you, because I was like all these sewing machines with all these yeah. attachments, tablins, shaftins, yeah. silent chain drivers, Fafner, Shaftins. Yeah, I don't know. And I'm sure they used industrial sewing machines, which are different than the ones we have at home. And yeah. I'm sure there was more to it. But. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's go ahead and let's show some of the black and white pictures. Let's save the picture for Mrs. Buckley, uh, the colored picture later. But let's go through some of these pictures that we got here. Okay. Okay. I love this one. Uh -huh. uh, this picture is, uh, that's Mrs. Buckley standing back there, mm -hmm. standing up. Mrs. Buckley with Jay McGrew. Is that right? Yeah, this is Mrs. Buckley with Jane McGrew. She is just kind of like, I love the picture anyway. Miss Janice because McGrew. Janice McGrew. And she's stitching garter belts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a ladies. Yep, they made ladies garments. Yeah. Undergarments. Look at Mrs. Buckley. Uh -huh. her and she had, hair. had the perfect hair. She was very similar to, in my mind, to Jackie Kennedy Onassis. Oh, um, good, good one. She yeah. was. She had the class of Jackie. She had the hair of Jackie. She had mm -hmm. the style, the very well, um, like almost custom tailored suits mm -hmm. um, and dresses that she wore. Um, she just in all of the pictures, she reminded me of Jackie O. And in fact, my mm -hmm. oldest daughter Malia played. Um, Regina Buckley at one of the cemetery tours. You can come back to us for a minute. We'll pull up another picture in a minute. And um, Malia did a fantastic job at the cemetery tour, um, which is always in September. It's coming up in not that much longer. Um, and she, when I, she wore a great suit to play her. Where'd you find but, that? Um, I found it at a store that sold vintage clothes. Mm -hmm. It's an actual vintage outfit. And, um, the wig that she wore, I ordered off of Amazon, and mm -hmm. it was a Jackie O wig, and it was yeah. just perfect. Yeah, it was a perfect. That, uh, was, a, that was a yep. good skit. Yeah, that was a great skit. Um, so then let's pull up the other picture with Mrs. Buckley and some other people in the picture. Oh, well, this is this is inside the building. So let's leave this picture up here for a mm -hmm. minute. Yeah, this is inside the building, and look at all those women sewing. Yeah. And look at those. That's Look at those things, those big boulders those pillars those pillars holding up the ceiling because it was such a large room they probably had to have those for support I wonder how noisy that place was i would guess that it the decibel volume in that room would be too loud today um if there was an osha back then they would have required hearing uh -huh. um, um plugs um, yeah earplugs um, because of that, but back then they didn't, I'm sure they didn't require that. I doubt any of the women wore them. 
I'd love to know. Well, I, I've got, you know, I don't know. These pictures are just amazing. These pictures are up at the uh, the floor, Historic Depot on the second floor there in the community room. If you guys want to go take a gander, everybody should go through the depot and stand, look at the pictures that we've got. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a really cool picture to show you how mm -hmm. busy mm -hmm. and how, how, look, yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of space in there. Nope. Elbow to elbow, pretty elbow much. Elbow to elbow. All women. Yep. Pretty impressive. And they're all dressed in their light colored, like factory worker mm -hmm. look. I don't know. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yep. Okay. So let's show the other picture I have. Okay. I like this picture. Let me read the caption below here. Geneva Ross, Geneva Hobal, Hoback. How would you say the H O H B A C K? Oh, Hoback. Yeah, I guess. Um, and then, and there's an inspector. The one lady is inspecting. So there's a lady sewing, and then you see the inspector leaning down. Oh. That was an inspector, and Kubitschek, K-U-B-I-C-H-E-K, Kubitschek. Okay. And the lady um, sitting at the um, sewing machine is Connie Cooper. Okay? Hmm. So you've got uh, uh, Geneva Ross. Geneva, and I imagine, so that makes me think that, that uh, Mrs. Buckley surrounded herself by powerful women, too. Mm -hmm. Because she, everybody, everybody in this place is all women. Mm -hmm. So, and then you've got the Inspector Ann. But this is what's funny. So, Connie Cooper working on an unmentionable. Mm -hmm. And you can see that they're holding bras. And basically, it's permalift, brassiers, and girdles is what she's making. Wow. But in the picture, underneath, it's like, and uh, Connie Cooper working on an unmentionable. Uh -huh. Because you couldn't say brassier mm -hmm. or girdle back in the day. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty neat picture, too. Yeah, that's Th that's pretty cool. the only There was only the four pictures there of the... Of the uh, uh -huh. Uh, I, I don't know if there was one more picture or not. Okay, yeah, here's this There's one. This, this, is, oh, yeah. this shows a little bit of the outside of the building. And I think uh, that is a, if you look to the far left of the building, you can kind of see another little bit of a structure. I believe that to be the water tower. That is the water tower. There yep. was a water tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's set right there. Yeah, four we're Sisters sitting. Manufacturing. So this is the staff mm -hmm. um, in, what's that say, 1981, I think. Oh. No, 1961. Abby, can you go over there and see? What's that say? You can get around there. Our little producer girl here. 1951. 1951. Okay, 19, that yeah. makes more sense. 1951. Yeah. Four Sisters Manufacturing Company Incorporated. So they took a whole staff picture. That's that's pretty neat. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah, so there's just so much history with manufacturing in Florida, and people yeah. seem to forget it. But um, Was that the last one that I had picture, it, with the exception of Mrs. Buckley? Yeah. Yeah, okay. and so Regina, uh, you know, she really respected all of her employees and treated them fairly. Yes. And I wonder if the reason why there what maybe wasn't a lot of men bosses is maybe because of what they were making. The bras and the panties, mm -hmm. it may sure. have been embarrassing for those women to talk to right. a man, a male boss about it, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> you, you think these are going to ride? <laughs> as, especially in that day, you know. Oh, today, yeah. Today, people would be like, whatever. Shoot, today, we, well, we you can't but, have every, every shirt you have, your bra shows. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but even after her factories closed... She still had a monthly breakfast with former employees. Mm -hmm. They all got to, uh, as many as wanted to come, they would have breakfast at one of the local restaurants. Mm -hmm. And um, that it says, mentions that in her obituary and says that as a testimony to the mutual respect and loyalty that she cultivated. Yes. Mutual respect. She yeah. respected them. They respected yeah. her. Not all bosses are like that. No. And, and it just comes down to the fact that, like, when you're a manufacturer, I, I do not like... I don't like anybody that thinks they're above anybody. Nope, me Because the thing about the people that they're the big dogs that mm -hmm. think they're big dogs, if it wasn't for the people that were doing making your product, you would not have nothing. Right. You have to have the workers. We've got to respect right. the workers. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, and she totally did. Um, uh, Mrs. Buckley, uh, she was a founding member of Floor Bank and Trust. Yep. And she remained on the board of directors until September 2010. Yep. Mrs. Buckley, Buckley was a strong Catholic of Catholic mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. She went to church at the St. Stephen's Catholic Church. Yep. She was part of the Business and Professional Women's Club, mm -hmm. the Illinois Youth Commission, the Flora Industrial Commission, 
So basically, that industrial, she was like one of the she ones. She was probably the only woman on there, I would bet. Yeah, she and and that industrial is it's what's responsible for industrial park. Mm -hmm. Literally, was what keeps Clay County afloat. Uh huh. And this is, I didn't realize this. I kind of hit on this, this is what I talked about earlier. Um, she was also the very first sponsor of the All American Girl and Boy contest mm -hmm. and was the MC mm -hmm. and continued that for several years. Yeah. Over 30 years. Over 30 years. Mm -hmm. So she was the, uh, yeah. you know, and then I, I would imagine at that time, the other strong female entrepreneur that I respect is Jan Phillips. Mm -hmm. And I want to do a story on Jan and Doug Phillips too. But, um, and I would imagine at that time, that's probably when Jan and Doug start coming and taking mm -hmm. over. And I would imagine that was probably Mrs. Buckley had it for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Jan Phillips took mm -hmm. it from that and then and, and took it home and then now uh -huh. lisa airbarker uh, yeah. t took over it the last few years lisa and i have been doing the all-american uh -huh. girl and boy contest and i also have down that she was active politically as well very yeah i you know here's so, the thing all that she had going on she still was mm -hmm. like doing some political stuff yeah because you know it just it comes down to it's like everybody everybody wants and politics they're all, they're, you know, we all have our thoughts on politics, whatever side you believe on. But the thing about it is, is I hear so many people say, uh, well, you know, you shouldn't talk politics. Well, you should. Mm -hmm. I don't really follow anything. Well, you should. It affects every it affects part of your life. It affects every part of your life. You've got to follow politics. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you take a strong stance like some of us do, everybody knows where I stand. I'm very vocal. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, it's, it's like you have to be, oh, I don't even know what's going on. Please mm -hmm. be involved take in politics. Pay you attention. have to take an interest. Mm -hmm. Are both sides ugly? Uh, you betcha. Mm -hmm. Do we like either side? Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you still have to. You still have to take an initiative. Right. If you put your head in the sand. If you like being free, pay a little of attention because if you don't, one day you won't be free. Ab absolutely. Because yeah. I believe that's what happens in other countries, mm -hmm. and that's my political stance on that. Mm -hmm. But let's show a picture of Mrs. Buckley here. Okay. This is uh, Mrs. Buckley died. Look how adorable she is. Yep. Mrs. Buckley died on August twenty first, two thousand twelve. At the year of 99, 99 yeah. years old. And she was known for always wearing a flower on her lapel like that. So that was a, a common thing in this picture. She has a yellow flower. Uh, I believe she wore all different colors is what I was told. Yeah. So um, she this, did. Go ahead. No, you go. Oh, uh, yeah. I was just saying Mrs. Buckley is not buried in Clay County. Oh, right. They have taken her to her to Cook County where, excuse me, she where was born. she was born. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She does have five daughters. Yes. Um. And this this is where they lived in her obituary. So yeah. I, I, I can read um, the where they lived then. I'm not sure that they're all still here. Um, this, of course, was written when she passed away, which was in, what, 19... She, uh, she died in 2012. 2012, okay. Mm -hmm. So five daughters, Marianne Reynolds of Hun Huntington Beach, California, and Flora. Um, Pat Shipley of Huntington Beach, California. Gina Riggle of Shorewood, Illinois, Tima Buckley of Huntington Beach, California, and Maureen Wineland of Seattle, Washington. Hmm. Um, she went on to have 10 grandchildren, and one of them uh, was named Buckley. They named him Buckley. Buckley? I think that's good. <laughs> that's cute. Buckley and Michael Reynolds, Lisa Knott, Reen Van Meter, Jenny Butner, Paul Riggle, Ann Streitz, Wendy Ryan, and Booth Wineland. Those hmm. were their names. And then she had 11 great grandkids. Yeah. So, yeah. She went on. Now, I wonder, like, with having those those daughters being raised by a strong female. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marianne, we know Marianne, you know, she, she you know, we know about her. And, you know, mm -hmm. she was very strong, influential. I wonder if they all had that, that, manuf that drive that their mother had. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The only one, like I said, do you know any of them, be uh, any of them besides Marianne? Mm -mm, no. Mm -mm. See, I don't, I don't know any of them either. Yep. Because I think Marianne, is she the only one that really stayed around the area? I think so, yeah. And uh, and she's not here. She's not here, huh? -uh. So, But I wonder if she, uh, that's the only one I, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, fascinating woman. Mm -hmm. um, love the story of Regina mm -hmm. Buckley and all yeah. that she did uh, for Flora and, and for other towns as well. I mean, this oh, is just one, yeah. one piece of the puzzle here. But she was, uh, you know pretty cool lady she was very 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 nice lady mm -hmm. and um well after that uh we're done with that story but we're gonna come and probably hit a couple other things we've got on our bucket list here and uh we'll be right back after this commercial break
Do you bowl like this? That's great. Do you bowl like this? That's great too. That's because whether you're a pro or you just want to have a lot of fun, at Peggle's Silver Dollar Lanes, we have a lane for you. We have Galaxy Bowling, gaming for kids and adults, Joe's Pizza, a full bar, darts, pool, and fresh and clean bowling shoes. Boy, does that smell nice. So come on down to Pagel Silver Dollar Lanes in Effingham, where we have a lane for you. My name is Robin Stanford. I own Stanford Marketing. It's a promotional products business along with an embroidery business. And we do custom hats, t-shirts, anything, you name it, we can make it. People like that we do stuff in-house and we can actually make things here and that we're not contracting the work out to other places. We never say no. We always try to find a way to do it. If anybody can do it, we can do it. We are hardworking women, that is for sure. Come to Stanford Marketing in Florida for all your custom and promotional needs. Doors, paint, windows, electrical, plumbing, and much more. Oh yeah, give me all your guns too. John Lucas. What? You better be dreaming about all the stuff we sell here at Zinc Building Center. Oh, I would. Zinc Building Center in Roosevelt on Route 45. It's a cool place. Welcome back to, by the way, with Beth and Stacy. We've been talking about Regina Buckley, but we are going to switch gears. Yep. And I'm going to talk about this cool little old book I found. It's the Flora Directory. I'm, I don't know if you can zoom in on I'm that. I'm curious about this book. Um, this is like an original phone book. I kind of got a shadow on it. Yeah. Bring know. it out front. There you go, there babe. You go. Uh, this is uh, the directory of the city of Flora. And um, it is fantastic. This is from the 1930s. You're obsessed um, with phone books. I do. I, in 1932, has, if you have any other old phone books, I would love to have them. I've kind of started a we, little collection. Yeah. We go to auctions, and I'm looking for this type of stuff. And Beth is like, is there any phone books? Yeah, any old phone books here? You can learn a lot from a you phone can book. You can learn a lot from a phone book. Okay. <laughs> so this is November 1932. This cost 50 cents, and the front of it says, Directory, City of Flora, Illinois, the Queen City of Egypt, the gateway to Southern Illinois. So I just what? want to say time out. So everyone from around here knows that El the southern part of Illinois was called Little Egypt. Little Egypt, yeah. Okay, because it's kind of shaped like Egypt, and it had it was warmer than up north and blah, blah, blah. They called it Little Egypt. Mm -hmm. So Flora is taking it upon themselves to call them the Queen City of Egypt. I want to go back to that. I no, I disagree. Oh, yeah. We're not even in Egypt. We're too far north. We're not. We're South Central Illinois. We're not really even true Southern Illinois. I know, but I want to be Queen of Egypt. Who, who do they think they are? <laughs> the Queen City of Egypt. And then to say they're the gateway to Southern, Southern I've Illinois. I've never heard that. That's wrong. Weird. The the city that is the gateway to Southern Southern Illinois is Harrisburg, Illinois. That oh, is the gateway to Southern Illinois. That, it's on their signs and everything. Well, <laughs> we're not Flora. No. So wait a minute. Harrisburg says that on your way in. That's How do you know the that's different real? Things. How do you know that's real? Because I said so. <laughs> That's how it is. That's how I it forgot. is. I forgot. I forgot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but there's a lot of interesting things in this book. So yeah, let's talk um, about what. What one, uh, like page three here is the Flora District fire map, and it has. I know you can't really see it, but it has, and you don't even have to zoom yeah, in. But yeah. it has a map of the streets, and then it has each different section of town is numbered into what fire district it is. Well, what so district am I in? So you would be. It looks like six, five, or maybe five. Huh. Um, you're kind of on the middle between five and six, and I would be. Um, oh wait, they have the south on the north. This is they have the whole thing upside down. Well, turn your book upside down. So <laughs> you would be what? Uh, and then they have the east and the west backwards too. What is going on in the thirties? <laughs> they have Elmwood Cemetery on the right, which would be the east. Oh Are you my sure? gosh, that is super weird. Oh. Are you? I don't know. They were smoking something they were in nineteen thirty-two. Thirties. Okay, district. This is the, why I want to tell you this though, because they had district fire alarms. So a warning siren whistle was one long blast followed by short blasts as follows. One blast for district number one, two blasts for district number two, three for three, four for four, five for five, and six for six. That's how you knew where the fire was. So it'd be like, womp, womp, womp. That would be three. You're going uh -huh. to district three. Well, first you have one long blast womp. and then the follow. So you'd be like, womp, womp. and then womp, womp, womp. womp, womp. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then that you good? could get in your car and go to the district because you're a fire uh, chaser. I am. I'd be like, oh, that sounds like it was over by Elmwood. Okay. All right. <laughs> So I thought that was interesting. That's interesting. And I like that. It was like all of this stuff in here for like people that were moving here. Um, and How, so. That's the coolest book ever. Yeah. So this directory um, has been made possible through the generosity of the wide awake businessmen of Flora, whose the, advertising we ask you to read. To them and to other public spirited citizens who gave us information, we are deeply grateful for their courtesy and cooperation. Compiled and published by the Flora Record Publishing Company, which was a newspaper here in town. Okay. They're wide so awake. they published it. Yes. This is all full of misinformation, folks. <laughs> Here's this another. book's going to come in so handy. It is, isn't it? All right. Why do we? Thanks to Ann Venable for this book. She loaned it to me, although I'm going to bargain with her to see if I can purchase it. <laughs> all right. So it says, Flora, Illinois, the queen city of Egypt, the gateway to southern Illinois. Blah. <laughs> then it says, named for Flora, the goddess of flowers. Is the metropolis of Clay County. Er, wrong. <laughs> More misinformation. Flora was not named after the goddess of flowers. It, everyone knows, knows the story the of story. how it was named after the superintendent the super of the railroad's daughter. daughter he, we agreed to name the town after her if he brought the railroad through the Flora. The railroad daughter. All right. So. Wrong. It has a population of 4,460 mm. people. A school census of 1932. It was, and then it goes on to say where it's located and stuff. But this is kind of selling the town to somebody who might want to move here. Like, this is like the early Chamber of Commerce. Well, I want to move here. Oh, e I already live here. Excellent transportation services. Like, what do we have? Since maybe back. Remember, we had that one taxi cab. We did, we did a taxi. Well, there was a picture of a taxi cab. We got a lot of gas stations. Does that count? Modern accredited schools. Manufactories. Is that a word? Manufactories. <laughs> Extensive orchard interests. Now that is true. Progressive businessmen. Nothing said about the business women. <laughs> modern homes, paved streets, water, sewer, and light and power systems, and modern fire department. Okay. I don't know, but I love I this want, book. I love the book. I just want to edit it slightly. Okay, so then it... And the, what she has they, control issues, people. Just <laughs> it, it does have wonderful advertisements all through it of old businesses. Um, oh, Pure cool. Milk Company, Red and White Store, Hayworth Coal and Ice Company, Renfro Variety Store. Have you heard of that one? Yes. Um, and then the neat thing is that on them that they just have the phone numbers uh, that are just like this one says, Scudamore's, shoes for the entire family, phone 24. That's all it says. But... Um, the interesting thing about the um, people that are listed in here, no phone numbers are given for any of the families that are listed. I'm going to get to that in a minute. So okay. they didn't really have phones. Or if they did, you just ask, ask the operator for them at this point. But the business <laughs> phones were listed. But the thing that I find really valuable about this is it has a street and avenue guide. And it says all east and west streets north from B&O Mainline are numbered consecutively from 2nd to 11th streets. All other streets and avenues are named. And then it goes on to go through all of the streets in Florida and it tells you where they run to. So it says like Vincent's Avenue, East Corporation Line to Mill Street, Flora Avenue, mm -hmm. Austin Avenue to South Main Street. Fair mm -hmm. Avenue, Austin Avenue to South Main Street. So your part of, of Fair wasn't even... a had no. homes yet uh -uh. when was your house built uh my house was built in the 40s okay yeah this is 1932 this is 32 and remember before mm -hmm. my area was the fairgrounds yeah horses ran through my area mm -hmm. so um then it, and then it tells you what streets are in what edition so if you've ever looked at your deed to your land and you're in the blah 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 edition mm -hmm. like the the golden edition that is white city area that's car street college street and ruth avenue um, right. Samuel so, White's land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, then it goes through the city officials and it lists all the community organizations, all the clubs that you can join. And um, it tells who works at the post office, who works at the high school. It's basically that a book, book is awesome. Of, like the Chamber of Commerce meets a phone book. Okay. You have got to. Yes. So let's look up the hemp pills, shall we? Let's this look up is the Stacy's pills. family, the hemp pills. Okay. Okay. Hemp pills. 
Uh, C E Hemphill, Chris, and in parentheses Christabel. So they will put the wife's name in, oh, that's in nice. parentheses Christabel, four hundred one East Fourth Street. Yeah, he was the one that started. That was the banker, Harry Hemphill, mm-hmm. Iris. That's my grandma and grandpa. Four hundred one South Mill Street, South Mill. Yep, Miss Jenny Hemphill, four fifteen East Fourth Street. Mm-hmm. Sam Hemphill, mm-hmm. four fifteen East Fourth Street. So even though. It was the same address. I'm assuming that was a brother and sister. Brother, yeah. They listed them separately. separately. Um, if you were married, you were listed on the same line. But if you were not, then you got your own line. Here's another one. Mrs. Sarah Hemphill, mm-hmm. 415 East 4th Street. Yeah. She's the last Hemphill. That's so they were all. See, because my, my grandfather, uh, Harry and Iris, came here in the 30s to build the post office. Because okay. my family's from St. Louis. The Hempills are from St. Louis. So the C.E. Uh-huh. Hempill is the banker, which we're not related to. Uh-huh. Okay, so DeVore. Uh, I was a DeVore. Let's do you. Um, there's only one listed. I have no idea who she is. Mary DeVore, 335 West 3rd Street. West 3rd. I don't think that was my great-grandmother's mm-hmm. name, so I'm not sure who that is. Um, and the, most of my other family was from Centralia, other than the Paines, which my grandmother... Zelda DeVore was a pain. So let's see which pains are here. Oh boy. There's three or four. Five. Okay, let's see what. Okay. The- uh, Clarence Payne and Effie. That was yeah, my great grandparents. Great grandparents. Uh, 121 Short Street. Where's that at? Short Street's down, um, you know, where Carrie Thackeray lives on, South, Ma- on yeah. South Main. And then South Locust runs here. Short Street's that little bitty short street right oh, no there. I'm kidding. There's three houses right there. Huh. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to drive by that later. Yep. Okay. Mrs. Nellie Payne, 120 West 3rd Street. Okay. And that's it. There's just the two. Yeah, that little short street's just right there. Okay. Well, how interesting. Anyone else you want to look up? Um, <laughs> here's uh, I'm trying a, to think. No, well, we'll be a, a, Oh, here's a Prince's Drugstore. We talked about that oh, a couple well, yeah. uh, episodes ago. Prince's Drugstore, and then in parentheses it says, Your Favorite Cigars, Phone 30. Nice. That book, that you keep that book on you. Scudamore's did a thing where, similar to how DiMaggio's did a thing with the most recent phone book, um, where they're, or a few years ago anyway, but their ad is on every single page. Yeah. Scudamore's did that. They're at the top of every page. Trade at Scudamore's where you get the most for your money. Phone oh, 24. Yeah. Scudamore's for ladies ready to wear. Phone 24. Um, so mm. A lot of these other places, Bowman's did it uh, on a lot of pages too. Yeah. But Scudamore's well, is like Scudamore and Bo- Scudamore's was the was the uh-huh. ones, man. Yeah, and then at the at the back of the book, they gave you blank space in case anyone changed hmm. their address or anything. That's cool. And then they also list um, the businesses, kind of like early yellow pages by their category. Well, let's so, save that for next time. Oh, okay. Because we're All right. out of time. We're out of time? Oh, yeah, my and gosh. That, you keep that book. Oh, there's the Orpheum Theater. Quick yep. flipping through that thing. Quick hey, it's so <laughs> good. I love stuff like that. Do you have a um, I quote do. for us? I do have a quote today. This is our Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. What do you got? If you were a pirate, you know what would be the one thing that would really make you mad? Treasure chest with no handles. How in the heck are you supposed to carry it? <laughs> Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts by Jack Handy. Yeah, how would you carry that sucker How with would no you handles? carry that with no handles? Oh, I don't even want to know. I don't know, but that's great. So anyway, well, this was a fun show. So I that hope was you guys a great enjoyed show. it. Thanks for joining us. As always, you can find us on Wabash Channel 100 daily at 11 a.m. New shows on Thursdays and Fridays. Or you can find us on YouTube with, by the way, with Beth and Stacy. But we will catch you next time. Thank you. God bless you and have a great day.